Coding a Web App PKA Episode 2 Morning! In this episode I keep working on the front-end part of the application and will also start building a simple API for it to handle uploading images to an FTP server. It shouldn't be too hard. I needed to create a button component, as it will be a reusable part of the project. It should look and behave in a similar way in most places. It would be nice if this component allows to pass native button element props and a few additional ones. So the button on the main page will lead to another page, where it will be possible to choose a file and upload it to the FTP for an API. I was also using some third-party services for storing files, like AWS S3 or Wasabi, but for this one I will just use a simple FTP. I always like to have SAS paths configured, so that importing of variables makes sense and so on is easier. Paths are always cool, I think. Sometimes I like to just talk without sense, even if it does make sense. Here's a little quote everybody should know. A man who asks a question is a fool for a minute. A man who does not ask is a fool for life.
Uploading files is rather easy. Of course it depends on how good you want it to work. For example if you'd like to allow for uploading big files then definitely you need to use streams. You might even want to come up with a way that will let the client upload files directly to a destination point, not having to push them through your servers. For images it shouldn't be a problem. A good quality image has a size of around 8 megabytes, I think. Might be totally wrong about it though. I like pancakes with cottage cheese and raisins. You can do cool stuff with images locally on the client's machine before uploading them. For example, you can crop them or compress them to reduce the size. That's good for the uploading process. Now I'm going to need an input component. Same story like with a button. Input elements should look and behave in a similar way through the application. So let's create a reusable implementation.
What TV series are you watching recently? I like to make input on change callbacks, giving new value as a first argument, instead of an event. It's because the update method we get from use state is the same reference always, so I can just pass it to an on change prop. Enhancing functionalities of an input can be a cool exercise for learning JavaScript. For example, you can make it clearable or allow for specifying text length limit or a more advanced one like applying a regex mask or something. Let me know if you'd like a short episode about that. Finally, let's start setting up the backend part of the application. I'll use Express Framework for that and try to keep things simple. Server side is almost always fun. To communicate with the REST APIs, I like to use Axios. I'll show you in the next episode. And what do you usually use for making HTTP requests?
Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.